hello and welcome to this online service from St Mary's Ely for this Sunday, which is New Year's Eve. Today we have two readings and we're going to read them separately as we first look back on the year that's been and have a moment to think about what God has done and give thanks. And then later to think about and pray for the year ahead. So shall we open in prayer? Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, light of the world. We thank you for your presence amongst us. And as we continue to celebrate your birth, would you come to us? Would we see you revealed in word and in worship and in the world around us? And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading is from Luke's Gospel. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are still in this season of Christmas. Our feasting and celebrating have not finished yet, even if we might be a little tired out by the journeying to see friends and family or the having lots of visitors um, or the, the extra entertainment over these last few days. And so in this first reading, we stay with the nativity story. The shepherds have heard the angels crying out glory to God. They've been told the Messiah has been born. And so up the shepherds get and off they go to Bethlehem to see what has happened, to see this thing the Lord has told them about. So the first thing in this passage is a response to this Jesus, this baby who has been born. We're reminded again that we're all invited to come and see what Jesus is like. In Epiphany, which starts from the beginning of January, we're thinking about how Christ is revealed in prayer in particular. And so today, as we ponder this, if we have heard the Christmas story over these last couple of weeks, how will we respond? Will we continue to come and see what God is doing in our lives? Will we continue to follow and to seek out God's work in the world around us? With the shepherds, we might want to commit to this year ahead to be looking for Christ, to be following what God has told us. And then, of course, they see the baby Jesus and we're told they respond again by telling everyone about what has happened. They return and they glorify and praise God for all that they've heard and seen, which were just as they have been told. And so I wonder what things in this year that have been, whether just over this short period of time recently or in the months before, what do we have to glorify and praise God for? What is it we're going into this new year excited about? What stories do we have to tell of God at work, of God fulfilling his promises to us? And we see in this passage, there are two ways to respond to that. With the shepherds, we might be shouting them out, glorifying and praising God and worshipping as we'll do in a moment. But we also have Mary here, Mary in a quieter state, a more contemplative state. She's taking it all in and pondering it in her heart, seeing something significant happening and in her exhaustion, perhaps from childbirth and all the visitors and everything else. She's still pondering, spending time thinking about, meditating on these things that God has done. And so for us, what can we praise God for? What do we want to shout aloud with glory and thanksgiving? And what do we have to sit quietly with to remember as we go into a new year? 
We're going to listen to a first worship song now and do ponder that question. What might we give thanks for? Today's second reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61 at the end and then chapter 62. So the end of chapter 61 of Isaiah into chapter 62. And it's a song of praise. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the soil makes the sprouts come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. 
The nations will see your vindication and all your kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendour in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have here in this passage in Isaiah, again, those themes of thankfulness and giving praise to God. The writer starts by singing out that I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices. It tells of all the things that God has done in making a way in clothing this person, not just in clothes and material goods, but in fact, with garments of salvation a robe of righteousness. We're reminded as we have this passage alongside that from Luke's gospel, we're reminded of the reason Jesus came. Jesus came to save us, to make it possible for us to have close, intimate relationship with God, to remove the all that gets in the way. It's through Jesus that we're able to sing out this praise to God, that we're able to delight, that our souls are able to rejoice despite all that is wrong in the world, all that might get us down. And there's just one verse in the midst of this I want to focus on as we now turn to look ahead to this new year, to 2024. In the midst of all this praising, all this talk of what God has done, saving and righteousness, it says this, For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. That reminds me of a verse um, in Hosea, which talks about God breaking up the solid ground so that the rain of righteousness can come down. There's something here about how God works and what God does in our lives. You can see behind me, there's um, quite an unruly plant. And in fact, this house plant itself started as just a little sprout from something else. It got transplanted and it's gone on to grow and grow and grow. But in order to keep growing, it needs good soil to grow in. And as we think of this image of a soil which makes sprout come up, or the garden and the way the garden is allowing the seeds to grow. We're reminded of a number of things about how God works in the world. Perhaps we call to mind that parable that talks about, well, what kind of soil are we? About our desire to be the kind of soil that can grow good things. What does that mean? Well, it means having our hearts open to God. If we think of that verse from Hosea, the breaking up of the hard ground, It means allowing God to soften us, to play a part in our lives, to pray that our hearts, our minds would be ready to receive what God has for us, what God wants us to do. That might be committing to our times of prayer and of Bible study, committing to our community, praying for compassion for others and grace for those around us in this new year ahead. Spending time making sure that our lives, our hearts, our minds are good soil for what God wants to do. And what about the sprout or the seeds? Well, for me, they remind me that so often what God is doing is below the surface. It is in that preparation time. And there's lots that we might point to around our community at St Mary's in our, and in our own lives of where we, just, we see something of what God might be doing. We see a little seedling start to come up and we wonder what it might grow into. We pray that it would grow into something fruitful and flourishing. I wonder if that's particularly true in these years after the COVID pandemic. And for us at St Mary's, the building project as well. We've had a year back in our new building after lockdowns and so on have ended. And I wonder if we're just starting to see sprouts coming up again, which were perhaps lost in those times when we were not able to be together in person and when we hadn't got to grips with working online in this kind of a way. And how about in our own lives? Do we see any signs that God has been preparing something and growing something? Or in fact, are there seeds that we want to see planted? 
are there things that we want to see God do that we want to pray for in this year ahead? They're not ready to sprout or come up, but they're part of this wider plan of all that God does in the world around us. So as we look to 2024, some things to pray for. Firstly, for those things where we see the shoots coming up, that we would be fruitful in all the different ways that we seek to live out God's love around us in Ely and in the lives of our friends and families and neighbours. We might pray for the things that we don't yet see, the seeds that we want to be planted. And we might pray that we would be good soil, that God would help us to be a place where his goodness, his good things can grow and flourish, both as individuals, but also as a community, as we seek to share God's love with every home in Ely, with all of those in our friendship circles, in our families, in our neighbourhoods. And so let's pray for those things. Loving God, thank you that you are at work in the world around us. We thank you for all the places in which we see sprouts coming up, in which we see evidence of your work amongst us. Help us to notice what you are doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those things that we long to see, for the places that need justice and peace, for places that need generosity and grace. Lord God, as we bring to mind places around the world and people we know who need your comfort and your strength and your healing and your wisdom. God, we pray, would you even now be planting seeds of those things would we be seeing the signs of your kingdom in all places of need and conflict and despair? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, God, we bring before you ourselves as we start this new year. We pray, would you make our hearts and minds good soil for your purposes, that we might see the signs of your kingdom spring up in our lives, that we might with the writer of Isaiah, be able to sing out of your righteousness and your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
And so a final prayer of blessing as we go into this new year. To a troubled world, we pray for peace from Christ. To a searching world, we pray for love from Christ. To a waiting world, we pray for hope from Christ. And so may the Father keep you in all your days. May God the Son shield you in all your ways. May God the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God the Holy Trinity drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. <laughs>